everybody, welcome to the last stream of the day, The Sketch Party. Thanks for joining everybody, I'm gonna pop up in my chat real quick so we can see everybody who's joining. And since this is the first time I've been streaming from the home office, let me know how the audio levels are, the music, all that good stuff. What's up everybody? I see Anna, Jack, Akeen, good to see you, Lena, sketching fun, yes. Lena, hello! Hello in the afternoon, so cool. So I am Kathleen Martin. I am a designer at Adobe. And like many of you all, I am working from home these days. So welcome to my home studio. It is spring with some cherry blossoms in the background. Super nice. Sam says audio sounds good. Cool, cool. Good to see, good to see. Let's put that on there too. Awesome. So this is the inaugural sketch party. Welcome. You should feel super excited to be here. This is the first one ever. And really what this stream is going to be is for the next hour, we are just going to draw together. I think drawing is a super good way to kind of cool down from the day. We've had a full day of Adobe Live streams. Actually, let's pop those up super quick so we can take a look at them. We've had this full day of streams. So what better way to kind of cool off for the night than to do a little bit of sketching in Adobe Fresco. So we started the day with Shauna, followed by Voodoo Val for the start of the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. Anna did some awesome drawing and painting uh, at 9.30. That was really cool. It was like a social distancing hug through the computers. That illustration was awesome. Then Paul did his first stream for the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. So if you're all trying to learn Photoshop or Illustrator, those are awesome to come back to tomorrow, followed by Jesse's uh, UI UX design and then the Daily Creative Challenge for XD with Howard. So that's also a great way to learn. First first party, yes Catalina, super cool Jose, sketch party. Hey, Jose, was this your, the name that you came up with? Do you get the props for that? Either way, nice job. And props to the whole Adobe Live team. You guys are just making magic happen. This is very cool. All right, let's pop back here. And like I said, we're gonna be playing in Adobe Fresco today. So if you are not familiar with Adobe Fresco, it is a drawing and painting app. It's really cool. We have some uh, great ways to do oil paintings, watercoloring, and just regular sketching. So let's take a little peek through it really quick. And if you have a CC subscription, you get some premium features as well, but it is free to use. So anybody can draw with Fresco. Michelle says it's 11.30 PM over here. This is the ultimate cool down for you, Michelle, right before bed. All right, so when you open up Adobe Fresco, this is what you see, and I already have a bunch of projects in here. One thing I've been doing recently is drawing my like frames for an animation in Fresco on different layers, and then jumping into Photoshop on the desktop to finish the animation. It's a little secret workflow hack that I love. Akeen says, one hour ahead of you in Turkey, it's already midnight tomorrow. Oh my goodness. Sam, thank you for the link. Awesome. So again, when you open Fresco, this is what you see. You can also come over here to these tabs on the left side. You can have some tutorials, learn a little bit about the interface. And I'm gonna take you through a couple of tips and tricks as well if you've never used it. And there's also Discover, so you can see people live streaming. There's me in the top left corner. You can also see other people and what they're making. Super cool. So we wanted to make this stream really uh, interactive with all of you. Since it is only an hour long, this is gonna be kind of a quick sketch charrette. Uh, and one thing that I wanted to do with all of you is make a kind of community illustration. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick one of these four sketches. We're gonna pick one of four color palettes and then see what we can get done in an hour. Now I'm gonna be back tomorrow, same time, same place. So we can either finish up the illustration that we work on today or start a new one if this one ends up going really fast. Michelle says Akeen is a night owl. I used to be a night owl. I don't know what happened. Got older, I guess. So old. And chat, if you are new to Adobe Live or just tuning in for maybe the first time after maybe you've been sheltering in place or stuck at home, uh, give me a shout out in the chat. I'd love to say hello to you all. Make sure you're doing all right. Akeen says, I was in Dorsey for a while anyway, so not much has changed. Honestly, same. Same, same, same. So for this sketch, this is this character that I just came up with the other night, and I kind of love him. He's super easy to draw, just a bunch of circles and triangles. And the whole deal with him is he is a wizard. He has this little wand you can see in every illustration, um, but he's always getting himself into trouble. 
So for example, in the top left one, he's running away from some creatures. In the bottom left, he's reading a spell book and he has some creepy crawlies creeping up behind him. So he never really knows how much trouble he's in, but the, the audience always knows. What's that called? Dramatic irony, perhaps? I also wanted to come up with maybe a name for this guy, so if you have any recommendations, I'd love to know that. Sam says, dang, what time do you wake up, Howard Pinsky? I'm in bed by eight. Oh my gosh. That's dad life for you. Who is that whittle? Erica, hi. Everyone give Erica some love. Good, good friend. Good, good designer. Friend first, designer second. Probably. <laughs> Um, Erica, this little guy does not have a name yet. His name could be Whittle, perhaps. I was thinking something silly. He's a very silly little creature. He never knows, like I said, how much trouble he's in. What kind of name would go for that? Maybe Oscar, perhaps? Danish says, Adobe killed it today. Great job, guys. Thank you. We're not done yet. I got you guys for another hour. We're going to be sketching. So in the chat, this is where the audience participation comes in. We want to choose A, B, C, or D for the illustration for today. And if we can't decide, no worries, because there's going to be future streams that we're going to do. Uh, but let me know. Chat, what do you think? A, B, C, or D? And I'm just going to keep an eye on the chat over here and see what you all think. And I'm not going to put my vote in the ring until the end, because my vote counts for like maybe five votes. <laughs> Nathan says, call him Bert. Merly? Oh, I like that, like Merlin. Very cute. Hmm. Okay, people are saying C, D, D because it reminds me of Animal Crossing. Alana, you know that's what it's based off of. Just dreaming of the day that I can play Animal Crossing again. Maybe what I'll do when I get off the stream. Just kidding, I have to go back to work. <laughs> All right, lots of C's and D's. A, the little doggy. C, please. Hmm, I'm seeing lots of D's. It's funny, D is the last one that I drew. I can't pick, Jack, I know, same. B is cute. Okay, so personally, I like B and C the most. Those are the ones I'm most excited to work on right now. Let me scroll up a little bit and see how these are going. It's sort of like a set design, totally. That's what I was thinking. I was like, had a couple of perspective lines in there. Getting real fancy schmancy with it. Hannah says C. Munir says B. What's up, Munir? How you doing? It must be late for you right now, my friend. Catalina says B, 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 B. That's five votes for B. Ooh, I should have done this drop poll. It's hard to choose. All right, let's go for D today. Since the first votes, there are lots of Ds. And then maybe in a future stream, we can do B. Does that sound okay? And something cool about D is this is actually, I'm imagining it being a night scene. So this would be like a dark sky and these would all be kind of glowing little bugs. Have a bat and a frog back here. Can you, can you tell that this is a frog? A very quick hand version of a frog. Nice. So one cool thing about Fresco is if you do zoom in or zoom out a little bit, you can always go back to full screen by pinching and releasing with your fingers. So I'm just gonna pinch and release. And there you go, you have full screen. Another cool thing about the interface here is in the top right corner, you can make it full screen. So you can see your entire canvas and then just the tool that you have selected over here on the left. You can also minimize and maximize your toolbar by tapping on it and you have your layers over here on the right. Awesome. So I'm gonna bring this back, and like I said, we're gonna work on D today. But before we start working on the actual sketch, we need to choose our color palette. So I'm going to move this over a little bit so we can just see D. And then let's turn on, finish that. Uh, let's not do that, actually. Let's duplicate. Duplicate the group. Merge it, turn this off, there we go. There's so many tools in Fresco that are super helpful to use. Once you get the hang of it, you can be really quick. So yes, we can crop that. All right, color palette time. Let's move this down a little bit so we can see. Again, we need to vote which color palette should we use. So just as a reminder, this is gonna be like a night scene. 
So all of these color palettes have dark values on them that could be used for a dark sky. Uh, so really, you guys can pick. I'm open to any of them. Let me scroll down in the chat so we can see them all. Hopefully he won't catch the bat and eat it. Never. He'll just sell it to Tom Nook. You like to go with the night scene? Cool. Munir says, I'm good, Kathleen. Just staying home all day. Wow, Munir. Thanks for staying in. I know it's tough. Okay, a lot of people are saying C. Felix says A five times, so that's powerful. It's powerful, Felix. Personally, I'm liking B and C. I think those will be kind of magical and fun and perfect for like a twilight uh, color palette. Edith says A is lovely. Super cool about these color palettes, Edith, is that I got them all from Adobe Color. So if you go to color.adobe.com, you can grab color palettes from images that are inspiring to you. You can also find color palettes from the community. There's tons of them. I think D was a community one and maybe C was as well. And then A and B were both taken from images that I was inspired by. And it does a great job of choosing colors that have uh, different values so you have a nice range of colors as well <laughs> erica says what does tom do with all those critters you sell him you don't want to know erica says ren what's up ren good to see you thanks for coming let's hypothesize though what does what does tom nook do with all those critters i think he gives them to the dodos and the dodos take them to those random islands and set them free and if you don't know what i'm talking about we're talking about animal crossing and i'll stop right now <laughs> Okay, I'm seeing lots of C's, so let's go for that today. So C is this one right here, just giving it a little circle so you know. So let's combine these. Let's see how much time we have left. Spent a good 10, 12 minutes talking about the sketching and the color palettes and Animal Crossing. So now's the perfect time to actually get into drawing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate my uh, palette layer. We're going to merge it. And then let's delete this. We'll do a little bit of organization before we get started. And actually, I'm even going to duplicate my project. Perhaps. Perhaps not. Okay, cool. This is great. We got this. If you want to move your layers around in the toolbar, you just long press them and drag them around. And I am going to make a selection around my color palette. You can use the selection tool like the polygonal lasso tool by just tapping. Or you can freehand draw it like the normal lasso tool. So we can invert the selection and erase everything. Perfect. Let's bring our sketch back down. And there we go. Since it is a sketch, I can increase the size and it won't really affect the final drawing as much. It can be a lower resolution because it's just a sketch. So this is how I like to work. I like to have my palette somewhere on the screen just so I can keep in mind how the whole thing is supposed to look cohesively together. And then I have my sketch. Let's just make it a little bit smaller. I do like to work with a little bit of white space around my illustration so I can really get a feel of how the silhouette of the vignette is looking. And there we go. So on a totally new layer, let's make a new one by clicking this new layer icon in the top right of the tools on the right. Now we're on a brand new layer and you can tell this layer is selected because there's a light blue outline around it. Allison says Tom Nook resells them for, for profit, of course. I hope so, Allison. I hope it's that innocuous. <laughs> You're selling fish as you speak. Don't tell my boss. Howard, are you selling them to CJ the beaver? Or Tom Nook? Okay, okay, okay. Enough about Animal Crossing. <laughs> or maybe this could also be an Animal Crossing podcast. Let's vote in the chat. Do you play Animal Crossing? Do you have no idea what it is? Do you hate it? Let's start a discussion. And while you're discussing that, I am going to select my sketch, turn the opacity down up here in the layer properties, and go 
from there. There's a couple different ways that I like to start illustrations. One is to make all of my big shapes into kind of flat colored shapes with the selection tool or the lasso tool. Uh, or I can just go in with a paintbrush and start just painting in the shapes. So I think I'm gonna do the latter. I'm gonna start painting in my shapes because there is a really nice brush that I've been using recently. A cool thing about Fresco, if you have a CC subscription, is you can add Kyle Webster's Mega Pack to it. So check this out at the bottom of my brush collections. There's the Mega Pack. It has almost 400 brushes in it and they work beautifully. So I have been using the Blair brush, like Mary Blair. It's a really cool like gouache painting brush. And we'll see if I can find it. Because one thing about the Mega Pack is there are a lot of brushes, so they can be a little difficult to find. But once you find them, you can favorite them so that they will always be in your favorites. Do you have favorite uh, Mega Pack brushes? Let me know what they are. I definitely have a few that I gravitate towards, and these are still loading, so maybe I'll pick one from the top here. A lot of times you'll find me just trying out <laughs> A bunch of different ones. I kind of like that. That was not bad. And we should decide what color we want him to be. So if the background is going to be like the darker, cooler colors, maybe he should be the brighter, warmer colors to kind of make him set apart. Star your favorite brushes. Yes, you know, you know, Dana, you know. What's up, by the way? Good to see you. What app are we using to draw? This is Adobe Fresco. It is free to use. You should definitely check it out. So I'm gonna make him pink and give him the little maroon frock. And then we can go from there. So one cool way that you can choose colors in Fresco is you can double tap your Apple Pencil and that will choose the color picker. And from there, I can just tap the color that I want. And I can zoom in a little bit and I'm actually going to put the sketch layer above the layer that I'm about to work on so that I can see it through it. Perfect. You can increase and decrease the size over here with the sliders, increase or decrease the flow as well as the smoothness. Keep the smoothing all the way down for now though. And I'm just going to slowly fill in my large shapes. One thing about this brush when the flow is low is that there's a lot of transparency that shows through it. And I want a little bit of transparency, but not too much because there's gonna be a dark background behind him and I don't want that to show through his skin. It might make things look a little bit muddy. So we'll keep things pretty opaque. Just increasing and decreasing my brush as I go. He's got these cute little bear ears. Usually when I make critters like this, they have cat ears. I went a different direction. I'm pivoting. Cool. And I think I'm gonna make him all one layer and work on the background in a separate layer. He's got these cute little arms. He's holding his net that he crafted himself, of course. I think Voodoo Val is doing a daily creative challenge that is all based on farming simulations or life simulations like Animal Crossing or Stardew Valley and uh, Harvest Moon. So we're just all on the same wavelength these days. What's up, Ashi? Peter says, I'm getting the app now. Super cool, it is free. But if you have a CC subscription, there are some uh, versions or I guess parts of the app that are even stronger, more OP. All right, we'll add his little leg here. Again, this little friend, Merly, as we're calling him, is super easy to draw. It's pretty much just triangles, circles, and squares. Aren't we all, if you really think about it? Just so moving around my canvas by pinching and zooming. And there we go. I wonder what the backstory for this little guy is. Has he always been a wizard? Was he thrust into the wizard limelight? Does he even realize that he's a wizard? You're a wizard, Whirly. Merly. <laughs> Howard says 2020 life simulation. Stay the heck inside. Please. With the please on the end. 
When did it come out, Fresco? Mm, I think it came out like over a year ago. Maybe Ren knows a more accurate date. But yeah, it's been a while. All right, under this layer, I'm going to actually drag the new layer underneath. Let's grab this maroon color so we can paint his frock in without having to worry about the legs or the arms. Cool, and after I have the outline, it's really just like a coloring book. You can just fill it in. And I'm taking the time to really scribble in these lines because this brush has such nice texture that the more you kind of move it around and scribble with it, the better your shapes will look. Let's turn on and off the sketch layer. Cute. Love it, we're getting our flat shapes in here. I think his hat maybe should be this maroon color as well to keep his color palette nice and cohesive. Whoops, wrong layer, that happens to the best of us. There we go, outline with a smaller brush. Another nice thing about Fresco is if you see this little touch icon right here, if I press it and activate it, and then brush, it uses my brush as an eraser. So it's a really nice way to paint quickly and not have to worry too much about how you're changing tools or what settings they're on, what modes they are using. Just press the touch shortcut and you're good to go. And you can change that up here in the cog in the settings. You go to app settings and then touch shortcut settings. I have it set to erase with brush, but it could just be eraser, which is like a round hard eraser. You heard your name, what was the question? When did Fresco come out? Do you know off the top of your head? It was like officially launched in 2019, but it was in pre-release and beta for a while. Oh, she says, I will be dead asleep tonight. You need some sleep for sure. It is late, late, late. Okay, so we have the flat shapes for the costume, for the figure. Now let's fill in some of the background. This is gonna be fun. It's gonna be kind of a wide sweeping swath of color. Let's drag this below. And I was using, ooh, the currency brush, that might be cool. I was using really nice textured brush. Was it a graphite one perhaps? Or the noise bar? This is one of my big problems as an illustrator is I love to explore different brushes and I forget. But like I said earlier, you can just favorite them. No harm, no foul. You can always come up here to the effects and check those out. Painting. Oh, here it is. Blair. That's the one I wanted to use this whole time. Darn, but these are the ones that I wanted to show you right now. So the Saison one and two. So let's choose the two, cause that's I think a little bit better for backgrounds. I'm gonna grab this purpley color. Let me show you some magic. So this brush, whoops, works well when it's really, really big, like up in the 300s. Grab this purple and, oh yeah. So it is texture sensitive or uh, opacity to sensitive. So the harder I press, the more pigmented and dark it gets. And the lighter I press, the more transparent and light it is. But notice there's some fluctuation in the hue here. There's some warmer purples, some cooler purples. It's still pretty, um, not too in your face. I'm gonna make sure that I get below where the grass would be. Cool, looks good. But if I pop over here to the Saison 1, check out the difference. There's a little bit more crumbliness in this one, a little bit more aliasing. Increase the size a bit. So maybe we'll put that texture right behind him and let it get less textured as it moves out towards the edges. Another super cool thing that I saw on Kyle Webster's uh, Twitter was that if you then jump in here with the eyedropper and choose a color from the Saison brush, you can get some nice fluctuation. So here, this is a little bit warmer. And then if I grab this kind of blue, this will be a little bit deeper. So I'll put this near the bottom where the grass will be. 
Nice. I could even go over here and grab into the super dark blue. And let's start bringing in some pieces of this grass. I'm going to make a new layer. I'm really parsing things out so that if I need to change anything, it'll be super easy. Maybe start filling in where some of this grass is. Let's turn off this sketch, see how it looks. Cool. Looks good so far. I know, such a lovely brush. The currency one is super cool as well. Let's turn the sketch back on. I'm just going to grab a couple of these little blades of grass just to help shape this bottom piece a little bit more. And then we can move back to the general figure because I don't want to get too detailed in one area off the start. Grab some overlapping a little bit. If we get too detailed off the start, then we'll have a hard time making the whole piece look cohesive and all together. And chat, if you're going to draw along with me, I would super love to see some of your work when you're done with it or as you are working on it. So if you want to share it with me, you can find me on Instagram, the Twitters, I'm pretty much Kathleen Illustrated everywhere. And I'm going to be posting about these live streams on Instagram so you'll never, you'll never miss a beat if you want to check it out over there. Okay, cool. That works for it now. Let's keep adding some detail into our figure. We need to finish up adding the net and the eyes and the lines for the hand so we can tell where his fingers are. With the pencil sketch on top, it almost looks like a wax resist or something. That's so true, especially with the texture here. The pencil does look very crayon-y. I don't mind it. I don't mind it at all. Remember, we can go full screen if we need to. All right, so I'm going to add in the net. Let's make a new layer just for the net. And what color do you think the net should be? Just the, um, I guess the stick portion of it. The bow of the net. <laughs> I don't want it to be too distracting. So maybe the dark blue or even the light blue and we can add some shadows to it. Thank you, Sam, for the link. I appreciate it. Akeen says the background music definitely fits our midnight design lounge mood. <laughs> Is it good right now, that chill hop? Fortunately, I cannot hear it, but I'm glad you're all enjoying it. I'm going to go for that light blue and then we can always darken it if needed. So come over here, grab the dark or the light blue. And now I believe we have used every color in our theme, in our scheme. So another cool thing about Fresco is if I choose the color picker down here at the bottom, you can see your recent colors and there we go. We have our whole palette right there and I don't have to keep color picking if I don't want to. I can just come over here and do it. There's also more. So I have all of my libraries um, connected here. I even have my Fresco colors. So there should be this theme in there, but maybe it hasn't loaded yet, but let's stick with our recents. It'll be good to go. And let's get that net in there. I'm going to keep using this Saison brush because I think it offers kind of a nice texture. And say I wanted to get maybe a straighter line for this. I don't want it to be so freehand. Uh, I probably do want it to be freehand, but say you don't, I can come over here to the bottom right and make a ruler appear. So I'm just moving this around with two fingers. I can line it up. And from here, and paint along this edge and get a nice straight line. Make it disappear like that. And then if we activate our touch shortcut, we can clean up the edge just a little bit. Cool, it's pretty cool, right? I dig it. Munir says music while designing is a great combination. Yeah, what do you guys like to listen to when you're designing? If I really need to focus, it cannot have lyrics. My brain cannot handle it. But if I'm doing something more creative and free-flowing like this, I could pretty much listen to anything. It'll definitely affect how I feel about my work. That's for sure. Let's decrease the size here a little bit. 
I like it connecting like that. Okay, and for this actual net shape, I'm kind of interested in using the selection tool or one of them. So check this bad boy out. I can draw with the brush I'm using and make a selection that way. So if I decrease the size quite a bit, what if I draw the outline of the net and then just fill that in? So we have this, and I'm gonna do kind of a cross hatch pattern and it will connect them. I remember the Fresco like product team was asking people like, how do you use this tool? What are your use cases? And this was always mine when I was making patterns on clothes. Okay, we have our vertical. Now let's add our other ones. These marching ants, distracting my eyes. Drawing this in, cool. And now I can jump back to the brush. Let's decrease the flow a little bit. Increase the size and I can just paint within here. I want it to be a little bit translucent and not the most eye-catching thing in the world, so I'm not pressing too hard. There we go. We have a nice net. Love it. Hakeem says, having lyrics spoken in the video's background music is like having text as the background of a text element. <laughs> it's too much. Too much. Definitely. Munir says, I like, I'm listening to Yanni or Italian opera while I'm designing. Makes me focus so much. Catalina says, Behance Live for background company. Oh, I'm glad. Erica says, excuse? Excuse about what? Have you tried watching Netflix while working? I can't. If something like a video input is going on, I want to look at it. And if I'm doing this, I want to look at this. I can't make my eyes go in different directions, at least not that well. But I respect. I respect the people who can do that. Okay, let's go into the eyeballs. My favorite part of this character are his little stinking eyes. They're so cute. I think what I want to do is perhaps grab the blue, but do a way lighter version. So I'm going to grab the color in here so it's almost white. And let's make a new layer. It's going to be a small layer, but that's okay. Decrease the size a bit. And there we go. His eyes are just so emotive and he doesn't really have any other features except for his eyes and his eyebrows, so they kind of have to be. Let's grab this really dark blue. Fill them in. Add those eyebrows. And the little line. Cool. Let's turn that off. He's coming together. I like the way the silhouette is taking shape too of the sky around him. Howard says, don't watch Tiger King while working. It's a trip. I watched three episodes of that last night and we just kept letting it play. We like were eating dinner for the first one and then we're not eating dinner anymore. And then we were eating dessert. <laughs> the, the whole evening was gone and we knew so much about Joe Exotic. What a twisty and twisty, turvy story that is. The brush to make a selection move? Yeah. Do you like it? You like it, Eri Erika? Erika? <laughs> Chat says, oh no, I'm late to the sketch party. That's okay, that's okay. We have about 20 minutes left and we just got done pretty much adding all of our base colors in. So now we can add texture and we can start adding light to this. So we do have these little critters that we need to add in, the glowing bugs and the glowing sky. We also need to add some shadows on him to make sure that we can tell that the light is being cast upon his face and other parts uh, and that he's shadowed in, in different parts. My cat just locked onto the moving dots in the background of the stream screen. Oh my goodness, lock on. Anybody else watch One Piece? It's the best song. 
So let's add the details and maybe some lines on the outside so we can turn the sketch off and then we can just freehand the bugs. Sounds good to me. I did do a little initial sketching of him and I'm curious as to how I handled the lines for that one. So let's pop into the other project that I worked on last night. It automatically saves, so don't worry about that. The project I worked on last night and we used one of the sketches that I showed as an option. So I'm glad you guys didn't pick it because I would have just been drawing the same thing again. Let's see. So I added a couple lines for his fingers, like his fingernails. He has some dark nail polish, um, some highlights on his eyes and a rim light where the light was the brightest. OK, cool. I really like how the light right. Oh, whoops. That's way too big. Right here it turned out. Use the lasso tool and then I applied like a textured opacity brush on top of it. Okay, I can do that. Let's go back to this one. Chat, how's your day going? How's your work from home? I mean, you usually work from home. Maybe not too different. I'm trying to remember how you hold. Oh, I don't think you even need this overlapping piece. There we go, because you'd be seeing the back of his hand and not the side where you would see it overlapping and coming out of his, of his curled fingers. Okay, so just the back of his hand and it doesn't overlap at all. Cool. Let's add our details. And I want to use an even darker blue than one that we have in our palette. So I'm going to use the same dark blue from our palette and just decrease the brightness. Maybe increase the saturation because I really like my colors, especially the dark values, to have a lot of saturation so they really glow. Let's grab the Blair brush. I'm going to favorite these so I don't forget. Here's Blair. Nice. And let's add a couple details. So we want to make sure that we know where the arm ends. Maybe that we know that he has a couple fingers. Cool. He had a little bit more depth in his eyes. So we have this line since his ear is behind his head. And a little bit of a line here as well. Then I'm going to erase some of these leg lines so they don't overlap the dress because that doesn't make sense. The dress, his frock. <laughs> Chad says, I only work from home a couple days a week, so this is more extreme, but doing great. Like Frosted Flakes. I'm glad. I forgot to add his shoes. He wears these cute little Converse with some crew socks. So let's add those on. One thing that I also love about Fresco is you can lock the transparency of a layer. So say I want to just color within these legs without having to worry about going outside the lines. It's really easy. I'm going to just tap the triple dots lock transparency and then I can choose the color that I want maybe his shoes will be this light blue and I can just color this in without a care in the world we'll increase the brush size even so we'll get that nice rough edge that went a little bit too high I'm double tapping on the screen to undo it and then he also has these cute little socks. So we'll choose this pink again, but make it very light. And add those in. I'm really imagining this whole world that exists with this critter, doing some visual development for my future Pixar film, Merle, the wizard. Brand new to Fresco, having a hard time with smooth lines. Larry, do you want smoother lines? Because I can show you how to do that super easily. Pretty much with any brush that you choose, especially in the raster or the pixel brushes, if you come to this third option down here in your brush options, you can turn the smoothing up 
or down. So I usually have it at zero because I like kind of some roughness and jitteriness to my lines. But say I increase it up to about 80. And what layer am I on? Let's go to one that's not locked. You can tell my brush is a lot smoother. Let's do some comparisons. This is 100. This is about 50. And this is zero. So here you can see I kind of jittered here a little bit. The curve is not as nice. And here at the top, it's just like a little worm, a little flying worm. So I hope that helps, Larry. You can always use the vector brushes as well if you want really smooth edges. Is Fresco just for iOS? I don't believe so, Ian. I do not believe so. Do you have a screen protector that adds a little tooth? Not right now, Larry. And I just ordered one on Amazon because I miss it. So there's Paperlike and there's a bunch of other screen protectors that add a little bit of like matte texture to your screen so it feels more like you're actually coloring on paper. Oh, I miss it. It's hard. The glass of the iPad is so smooth. And if you've ever used like a Wacom, you may realize that the screen is a little bit more toothy. It feels like you're actually drawing on paper. All right, I'm gonna grab this blue again. Let's make it a little bit lighter. Decrease the size, we'll add the little lines in the socks. Not trying to be too prescriptive here, just add a little bit of texture. And I'm rotating my image so I don't have to actually rotate my iPad since it's connected with cords and stuff. I'm just rotating my image using two fingers and then if I want to snap it back to its original size, I just pinch in and pull up and boom, it's back. Okay, I think we can turn off the line art. Actually, let's add in where we want our light and then we'll turn it off. New layer for the light. We're gonna introduce this really light blue back in. So we want a little bit of light there, here, here, and this. Critter will be glowing as well. And our line art is no longer needed. Cute, this looks like a could belong in a nice little golden book by Mary Blair. <laughs> Sam beat me to it. Windows and iOS. Thank you, Adobe Live. Thank you, Sam, for posting the devices. Awesome. Larry, the smoothness helps. Good. I'm glad. Okay, so time to add a little bit of depth to this bad boy. I'm going to be here for another about 10 minutes, maybe a little bit more since I'm the last one of the day. I can go right until 3.30 and no one can tell me not to, <laughs> except Gus is telling me not to. <laughs> My studio manager is telling me not to. <laughs> so 3.25 it is. Sorry, there's a lot of moving around going on in my canvas. I'm trying to like look at it, make sure there's enough white space, figure it out. All right, let's add some of this glow. One surefire way we can add glow is to use blending modes for our layers. So I'm going to use this really saturated blue that we haven't used very much. I'm gonna choose one of these Saison brushes again. I choose the first one because it doesn't have as much, or sorry, the second one because it doesn't have as much up and down, back and forth texture. You'd love to hear Gus's laugh. <laughs> he probably came in here to told, tell me to not do exactly what I was doing. Uh, Ashi says, what's your favorite tool that makes your life easy? Mm. <laughs> Hardware or software? I'm going to toss it back to you. Dana says hello to Gus. Gus will give you a shout out, I'm sure. So let's add, actually increase the size of my brush quite a bit. I'm using a really light touch right now to add the most outer ring of light. And then I'm gonna increase the brush size even more. Use a little more pressure, build it up. A little more pressure. 
decrease the size a little more. Maybe we'll even choose something that's way more saturated and a little lighter to do the innermost light. This isn't even one of the live brushes that adds and blends for, for you. This is just such an awesome brush by Kyle. Okay, we're gonna go back to that other color, increase the size quite a bit, add some more of this glow. Do it here, let it add up for you, and continue over here. There's not much danger in this illustration. In all the other sketches, he was getting himself into trouble. So I'm gonna have to add some sort of spooky element and I'm not sure what it should be. Chat, if you have any ideas, feel free to let me know. Should there be something stalking him in the shadows? An even bigger net chasing him in the background. He doesn't even know about it. Or maybe this one can just be a nice moment. Doesn't need to be spooky. Something I always need to remind myself. Doesn't always have to be spooky, Kathleen. There we go. Add some of this saturation right in the center. It's almost like when you're looking at a flame. <laughs> you know all those times that you're just looking at a flame. Uh, the very center is the brightest point. It's like the blue and the white. And as it goes out, it gets warmer and also a little bit less bright all right so i mentioned blend modes let me show you really quick how to apply them in fresco so i have my firefly layer right here in my layer properties i can change the blend mode just like you would in illustrator or photoshop we have multiply make it a little bit darker color burn these are spooky these look like the darkness the void he's trying to catch the void we can choose lighten, screen. I was thinking maybe like a color dodge. That's glowy, right? Tarantula, oh my gosh, he's about to just get bodied by a tarantula. He doesn't even know it. Ooh, linear dodge, that's nice. I don't want it to change the color too much. So that's why I might go with linear dodge because it keeps the color less saturated than color dodge does that changes the whole hue of it so let's go linear dodge you can always change the opacity but I like to keep it 100% a dementor in the background good idea Haley that would be spooky I don't see any chocolate on him alrighty and from here we can start adding the shadows and the light on him that's being reflected or uh, darkened Alexis says, what is the daily challenge for today? Alexis, no worries, there's no challenge today. There was actually just the welcome screen or the welcome stream. So tomorrow, Val and Paul and Howard will be doing the day one challenge for Photoshop, Illustrator, and XD. So tomorrow is the stream that you wanna come if you wanna learn the first workflow of the challenge. One way that I like to add shadows is to, again, use a locked transparency layer. So remember we locked the transparency of this one so that we could draw those shoes on. Uh, and then I'm gonna use the lasso tool to make selections. So since his head is round, I'm going to select his head there. Since the hat is a cone, I'll select it on the left side. And let's choose one of our purple colors. And I'm gonna go back to my brush. And in my brush options, I can even change my blend mode. So I'm gonna do this to multiply. Turn down the flow quite a bit, turn up the size. Oops. And now we can add color, maybe. Why isn't showing up? Oh, I picked the wrong color, perfect. Perfect. So now I could add a little depth. Add a little depth here. Deselect. And then continue. So 
we'll add an even darker shadow, say here. Maybe we will use one of the blues. Set to multiply, perfect. And introduce that there. This is a way that I like to build up the lighting in a scene with these small kind of slices. Slice of light, It's a nice way to say it. Let's choose a different one, maybe color burn. Darken this piece. And as you can see, so the left side of his head is starting to become darkened and the right side is staying light, although we would add more highlights to it that would reflect this kind of blue. But we're almost out of time for today, so I'm not going to probably get to the highlights. I'm going to just keep working on the shadows for now. So let's add some shadows maybe to this arm. Actually, the whole left side of his arm will probably be in shadow. Ooh, love that. So let's select the whole left side. Let's use this purple, change it back to multiply, whoops. Turn down the flow quite a bit, we don't want it to be too dark. And then change it to color burn so it gets a little bit more saturated. Nice, We're slowly adding more darkness here. The sketch is coming alive with color, yay Ashi, I'm so glad you think so. I don't want it to be too close to the color of his robes, so maybe we will add more of this blue. And maybe we won't have it on multiply or color burn, we'll just have it on normal. Mm, that looks a little bit muddy. I'm gonna go back, go forward, multiply. slowly adding shadow on the left side. Now let's add some more on the robe. And add a little bit more on the hat. Step by step, adding more and more darkness. Oops, this one is not locked. And that's not locked and adding a little bit more. So I'm gonna head out of here in about two minutes chat. So make sure that you're back here tomorrow morning for even more Adobe Live. We are trying to provide as much as we can right now while everyone is stuck at home and hopefully being creative and learning more if that's their wish. But uh, stick around for just another minute or two while I keep adding a couple more shadows. And like I said, I'm gonna be back tomorrow. We're probably gonna work on this exact sketch again to keep adding the light and the glow. So hopefully by the end of tomorrow, we'll have a nicely uh, lit illustration. So I might even go in without using the lasso this time. Increase the size, decrease the flow. Add a little bit of depth that way. Go into the arm, do the same thing. Nice. And there'll be an even smaller little shadow right under the hat. There we go. And then I don't think we'll have time, but in future live streams, we can always go back to the other streams. This is the other sketches, I mean. Is this the one I'm thinking of? Yes. Let's turn all of these off. So we can take a peek of where we started. Boom, started here, we chose, we chose the color palette. It's good fun, thanks everybody for helping me out with uh, choosing the sketch and the color palette. I don't think I could have chosen by myself, so I appreciate it. And thanks everyone for stopping by. Again, I'm gonna be back tomorrow at the same time, but we're gonna start Adobe Live early in the morning tomorrow with even more and three daily creative challenges. So it's a great time to come hang out. Uh, again, have a great evening or morning or whatever time it is for you. We'll see you soon. Thanks everybody, bye.